new questions for Baltimore police about their response to the Brooklyn Day mass shooting. Some question if police are using all resources available for the investigation. That's right. And this, as the mother of Aliyah Gonzalez, one of the two people killed in that mass shooting, brings her concerns directly to the mayor and acting police commissioner during their last public town hall tonight. All I know is that I listened to the transcripts, I read them, and I heard police officers said this is a job for the National Guard. No one responded. Yep. I had people from that community almost begging the police to come there. No yep. one responded. Well, Fox 45's Keith Daniels was at tonight's meeting where the mother of one of the Brooklyn victims had sharp criticism of we just saw for BPD. Our team coverage begins with Jeff Abel, and there are claims the department turned down federal help to catch suspects. That was first reported by the Baltimore Brew. Jeff, what can you tell us? Well, the reports are actually accusing the city of resisting federal help with this probe. And tonight, many community leaders are calling on Congress to step in and asking the feds to take it over. And it's clear y'all did nothing. All of y'all dropped the ball. In West Baltimore today, neighborhood president Doc Cheatham says he's lost all confidence in the city's ability to solve the three-month-old case of Brooklyn's mass shooting. It was the perfect storm. Every agency that could have done something did something wrong or left out something they should have done. And I'm saying, let's clean this up. Let's bring the feds in, FBI, ATF, let them investigate the case. Cheatham and more than 30 other community leaders are now calling for a congressional inquiry into the mass shooting that left two dead and 28 injured. So far, police have made two arrests, but no one has been directly linked to the shootings of the 30 victims. The investigation has been saddled with questions about officers' failure to secure the crime scene and the sweeping away of possible evidence before it could be properly processed. This is uh, the type of things they, they teach us not to do at the academy. From the beginning, the mayor has insisted federal agencies are assisting in the probe. In fact, this is from the mayor tonight. You know that ATF and FBI have been there since day one. Uh, we're not going to go into deep detail about what our federal law enforcement agencies are doing in partnership with us. But an investigation published by the Baltimore Brew today says the city has actually shunned the help of the FBI and the ATF. Quoting a top level source at the Justice Department as saying there is a strong puzzling culture at the Baltimore Police Department that circles the wagon and says this is our business. We can take care of it. Thank you. But we got it. Unfortunately, they didn't have it. I think in this case, the federal government could get everybody out of this, do an outside investigation. After three months, Cheatham is convinced an outside investigation is now critical to ensure the truth finally surfaces. Three months is unacceptable. We're not asking the pointing fingers at anybody. We want an inquiry, a congressional inquiry, to bring in all the people to find out why three months and no action. Yeah. Unacceptable. Well, last month, the city had promised to release a report, its own report, on how it handled the case. Tom, tonight, however, the mayor promised to expect that report very shortly. We're live. Jeff Abel, Fox 45 News. Jeff, thank you. Well, the Brooklyn Day mass shooting, also a topic of discussion at tonight's final public comment meeting with Mayor Brandon Scott and Acting Police Commissioner Richard Worley. The mother of one of those victims killed says city police weren't there when residents needed them. I had people from that community almost begging the police to come there. No yep. one responded. Well, Fox 45's Keith Daniels was at tonight's meeting. He joins us live now with the very latest. Keith. Well, Mary, the mayor and acting police commissioner faced a packed room in East Baltimore tonight. And for one mother, it was very emotional as she faced both city leaders. Welcome everyone to our seventh and final public safety meeting. For the past three weeks, Mayor Brandon Scott and Acting Police Commissioner Richard Worley engaged in community meetings, both virtually and in person. We thank God for you and this opportunity to our mayor and to our acting commissioner today. Tonight at the Greater Paradise Christian Center in East Baltimore. And if you're in East Baltimore, let me hear you say East Side. East Side. The last of seven city town halls, the mayor. And fathers, we open up this meeting today. We don't do anything without you. With this nominee for police commissioner. 
one of the biggest things that I did in the Northeast, I was able to connect with the community because I communicated with them on a regular basis. Um, and I was honest. I told them when we messed up. I told them when we did well. We mess up, you fix it, you move forward. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing as the commissioner. The mayor calls the meetings an opportunity to discuss how to build a safer Baltimore. This is the goal, to become a city in healing. We all need healing. And to hear from residents about what they want to see from the city's police commissioner. Uh, I wanted to ask for both uh, the mayor and the acting commissioner, what is... Residents have stepped to the mic with a range of concerns. That we're frustrated. Not surprisingly, violent crime, including the deadly shootings happening across the city, have been a top concern for residents. At this meeting... I have to live with this unbearable pain. The mother of 18-year-old Aaliyah Gonzalez, one of the two people killed in the Brooklyn Day mass shooting in July. The heartbroken mother telling the mayor and Worley, city police were not there when the people in that community needed them. I had people from that community almost begging the police to come there. No yep. one responded. Dispatch started begging police to send someone out there. Nobody responded. And then I heard you say, by the time we got here, the incident had already occurred, but it did, <laughs> it did not have to occur. And as you know, as I, you and I have had conversations that I'm so sorry what happened to your, your beautiful daughter and to, to your sister. As I've said to you, we'll be there for you. I'll be there for you to help you guys through whatever that, we, that you need. Well, more concern about the deadly gun violence came from 16-year-old Dayana Wilkerson. She told the mayor and acting police commissioner about the shooting death of her young godbrother. Meantime, the commissioners or acting police commissioner's confirmation hearing is set for September 21st. We're live tonight. Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News. Keith, thank you. That mother's heartbreak and pain is visible and just heartbreaking. Mayor Brandon Scott and Acting Commissioner Worley have been hosting these town halls all month long. Residents have brought up a number of concerns from prostitution to juvenile crime, even the Safe Streets program. Neighbors would be more comfortable speaking to the police if they were out of their cars. I was at the Squeegee Collaborative, which started 30 minutes late and the mayor was absent. This meeting also started 30 minutes late. It's clear that you don't want to hear from citizens. When we're talking about trust, I have to, I want to know what are you going to do to show the, the Baltimorean that lives in this? They seize it every day. The safe street workers you all talk about, I watch them sell drugs. I watch them. The prostitution. The prostitution brings the Johns in who feed the prostitutes with money. Fox 45 News has done extensive reporting on these town halls and the concerns residents brought up at them. You can find all of our reporting on our website, foxbaltimore.com. Mayor Brandon Scott will hold a news conference tomorrow morning at 1030. The mayor says he'll be making an important public safety announcement, but didn't provide further details. Fox 45 News will have complete coverage on air and online. Baltimore police offering a $4,000 reward for information about an armed carjacking in Upper Fells Point last month, one of several car-related crimes in recent weeks. Alexa Asheville has more on that story coming up at 1030. Juvenile car thefts have also had lawmakers' attention. Over the past week, Fox 45 News reported on two 11-year-olds involved in car thefts. Police say both are too young to be charged. Legal experts argue something needs to change. I think if there were better means of accountability and there were more consistent, uh, consistently applied accountability, we would see the numbers go down. Well, many lawmakers and prosecutors say the state's juvenile justice laws are to blame for an uptick in youth crime. State Senator Jill Carter authored some of the laws in question. She's continuing to push back on those claims. Fox 45's Mackenzie Frost has the arguments from both sides. Senator Jill Carter says law enforcement, prosecutors and leaders all over the state of Maryland don't understand the law that she helped sponsor and get through the General Assembly. But the message from these leaders on the ground is clear. They say the changes to the juvenile laws aren't working. Senator Jill Carter standing by a plan she helped usher through the General Assembly. Not prosecuting kids under 13 with certain crimes and preventing questioning of juveniles without their parents and attorneys approval. 
Do you think that it's really having the intended impact? I think that police and prosecutors need to be better educated if they're believing um, that they can't do anything, which I don't know why they would believe that. It makes no sense. Baltimore City State's Attorney Ivan Bates disagrees. Our problem is the system and the laws just aren't working. Saying kids are learning the laws and know they won't face consequences. There's nothing the law will allow us to do to hold them accountable and they're doing whatever they want. But it's not just Baltimore City's top prosecutors sounding the alarm about these juvenile laws. Baltimore County State's Attorney Scott Schellenberger. They know that, you know, nothing's really going to happen to them if they keep their crime in a certain limit of types of crimes. Even in overwhelmingly Democratic areas like Montgomery County. They come in, we can't detain them, they're back in the community the next day. They get picked up for the second one, can't detain them. They're back in the community again the next day. They pick up a third. They're back in the community again the next day. These top attorneys seeing the revolving door of kids committing crimes point to the laws as the problem. And police are the ones picking up the same kids time and time again for the same crimes. Like the 11 year old in Baltimore County arrested 13 times since May 31st for stealing cars. This is what I'm to show a motorist for, people like you. Or another 11-year-old seen in this video obtained by Fox 45 News getting released by Baltimore City Police after allegedly stealing a car, no charges filed. From Anne Arundel County. The 11 and the 12-year-old, had it been a carjacking or an attempted carjacking, that meets the criteria um, for those offenders to be charged. But since it was a crime against property, which motor vehicle theft is a crime against property and not a crime of violence, um, it does not meet uh, the criteria for charging. To Prince George's County. Under the new laws of the state of Maryland, uh, it, it has become more difficult uh, for police uh, to question young people uh, about anything. The message from leaders in elected office to on the ground and in the courtroom is the same. We have 15 and 14 year olds running about our community at one, two, three o'clock in the morning, armed and dangerous, um, unaccountable and unafraid. None of us feel safe. I don't feel safe stopping at a gas station to get gas. There is a huge disconnect. Political analyst John Deedy says Senator Joe Carter and other architects of the juvenile reform plans like Delegate Luke Clippinger need to do a better job of explaining what's changing. But the changes are raising questions and now no one is taking responsibility for what went wrong. But when you point one finger at somebody, three are pointing back at you. And I think that, you know, there needs to be more legislative accountability. Now, maybe you need longer than a 90-day session to kind of comprehend some things. Well, Carter argues some law enforcement and prosecutors might be resistant to change, and there are steps to take for kids routinely breaking the law. Prosecutors from all corners of Maryland argue the current juvenile justice restrictions tie their hands and protect the suspects of crimes more than the victims. Some state's attorneys say that these kids' lives are at risk, and without change, this juvenile crisis that we're seeing in terms of crime will only get worse. In the newsroom, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News. Senator Carter says law enforcement can file what's known as a child in need of supervision petition, a SINS petition, when there's a young offender. That petition can offer programming and services like counseling to the child and family. But those services are voluntary. Senator Carter says next session she will once again introduce legislation that would require police departments to file the petition. That same plan didn't pass last year.